Welcome to another edition of Untold Recaps. Rhode Island sized chunk of ice fell off suddenly. Later, at the UN summit on global warming, Jack gives a speech in which he warns of an impending global cooling disaster. Based on what they found in ice cores, this could happen in the next 100 to 1000 years. A few days later, Japan is attacked by a devastating storm that rains down massive hailstones that kill hundreds of people and level entire neighborhoods. Working at the Headland Center in Scotland, Terry and his co-workers detect a significant and rapid temperature decrease in one place over the Atlantic and attribute it to a malfunctioning temperature meter. Space station astronauts all at once reported that enormous storms were brewing over Earth. Max Sun is in New York with his pals Laura and Brian for an academic decathlon when they notice a massive flock of birds flying south, something that has never happened before. Him that the climatic changes he predicted are happening now rather than in a few millennia. Jack then says that this type of event hasn't occurred in 10,000 years. A meteorological technician in Los Angeles reports to his superior that hail has started falling on a local beach, and that they must now issue a tornado warning throughout the state. Tornadoes of unprecedented size have already struck Los Angeles, causing widespread panic before the warning could be disseminated to the public. Jack says he talked to Terry on the phone, and Terry thinks there's been a shift in the North Atlantic current which will make the extreme weather conditions much worse. The helicopters crash as they unexpectedly fly through the center of a massive storm, and the fuel lines begin to freeze and the rotors stop spinning. One of the pilots who survived the accident makes an attempt to escape, but he can't move. Sam, Laura, and Brian are all stranded in New York City at the same time. They try to hire a vehicle to transport them south of the city, but the streets are also beginning to flood. Zookeepers at a nearby facility notice that all of the wolves have disappeared from their enclosure. Sam and his pals hurry towards the library, while Laura gets a wound on her leg from a jagged metal fragment from a passing automobile. They make it to the building in the nick of time, avoiding the oncoming storm surge. Jack and Terry have a phone conversation about what may have caused the helicopters to freeze so abruptly. They determine that everything freezes instantly because the storms bring extremely cold air from up in the sky down at such a high rate that it doesn't have time to warm up. They also find out that the world will enter a new ice age in a little over a week, contrary to their earlier predictions. Three large storms are developing, and according to Jack's prognosis, they will soon engulf the whole northern hemisphere. There is no way to make phone calls in New York at the moment since the power is out. But Sam tracks out a payphone that gets its juice straight from the phone line, and he makes a call to his dad, Jack. In order to keep warm during the storm, Jack advises his kid to stay indoors till it passes. Jack assures his kid that he will eventually come get him. The dry clothing. Laura needs to wrap her arms around him to help him warm up. Jack gets ready to go and goes looking for Sam. Later, a large cargo ship is seen being washed in from the sea, but it is unable to move from its current location near the library owing to the shallow depth of the ocean. Because the weather in the south is only going to get worse, Jack meets with the government before departing to get to Sam and explains the situation, suggesting that everyone in the southern states be evacuated. To the vice president's question about what the northerners should do, Jack's advice and issues in order to evacuate the southern states to Mexico. When the electricity goes out at the Headland Center in Scotland, Terry and his co-workers literally freeze to death. Meanwhile, New York's temperature has plummeted dramatically, turning the ice on the flooded streets into solid sheet ice. Sam tries to tell the people in the library not to follow the hundreds of people who are seen walking on the ice in the direction of the south, but most of them ignore him and follow the crowd instead. Desperate people at the Mexican border are beginning to cross over the fence. Sam and the other survivors return to the library, where they burn books in an ancient fireplace and scavenge the vending machines for sustenance. As Jack and his two companions make their way north of Philadelphia, they run into trouble and are forced to take to foot. Frank has been saved by the lifeline, but as Jack and Jason try to haul him up, the glass underneath them begins to shatter. Frank sees this and resolves to take his own life in order to save his old buddies. While the rest of the team snoozes in the library, Sam and Laura have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation in which Sam admits that Laura is the sole reason he decided to join their team. After that, Laura gives him a passionate kiss. The group notices the wound on her leg and realizes she probably has blood poisoning and must get penicillin immediately. Sam, Brian, and a new acquaintance named Jay. D. set out to investigate the cargo ship parked in front of the library, where they hope to find some penicillin. Within an hour, the eye of one of the storms will pass over New York City, as seen from the International Space Station. Jason abruptly passes out as Jack and he get closer to New York, forcing Jack to carry him. Sam and his two pals reach the cargo ship, but the zoo's wolves have picked up their smell and are on their trail. 
The wolves have entered the cargo ship as the trio discovers antibiotics and food and begins to collect it. The astronauts can see that New York is located directly in the center of the storm. Sam, too, has realized that an eye is watching them, and he has informed his companions that they must leave quickly. Sam successfully traps the wolves after luring them away with bait. They load up a life raft with supplies and J. D. and make a break for the library. Jack, meanwhile, has realized that he, too, is in the center of the storm and is making plans to seek refuge. All the tall buildings begin to freeze from the top down as Sam and Brian rush away from them. Jack tosses an unconscious Jason off the edge of a building and then leaps in after it as he watches the American flag stop in mid-flutter. Sam and Brian sprint through the stacks and enter the room just in time to toss more books into the blaze. A while after the storm center has passed, Jason finds himself in a kitchen, where Jack has done his best to keep them warm. Jack is so scared that Sam won't make it that he wants to leave right now. Space station crew members will get their first glimpse of Earth the following day. After waking up to a breathtaking frozen landscape, Jack and Jason make their way to New York City. The pair finally reaches the library and begins their investigation there. Suddenly, they come upon a door, through which they can see a bright light emanating from below. When they pull it back, they can see Sam and the rest of the group gathered around the hearth. Sam quickly approaches his dad and gives him a bear hug. Helicopters are sent to retrieve the survivors and continue the search for others when word reaches the southern military. When the sequence concludes, an astronaut on the ISS says that he has never seen Earth's atmosphere so clearly. The end. If you enjoy watching videos like this, please hit the like button, subscribe. You're welcome for watching.